Thanks so much for joining us. We have two gentlemen sitting here right now who are going to talk about the arts and schools. The executive director for Arts for Learning Connecticut is John Michael Parker. That would be you, which of course you know. And Afrain <laughs> Silva, um, Afro-Brazilian dance company. Yes. Pronounce it for me. Capoeira. See, you said, you said it beautifully. <laughs> All right, so for folks who don't know what Arts for Learning Connecticut is, John Michael. So Arts for Learning Connecticut, we're a nonprofit. We are based in Hamden, Connecticut, up the road, and we are the largest provider of arts in education in the state. <clears throat> so we have a roster of 100 teaching artists, people like Efrain and folks from across the artistic spectrum, and they go into schools and provide programming for young people. So what's the gamut? If, let's say I'm a school and I want an artist like Efrain to, to come in. Um, you, you have uh, dance, you have what else? We got great theater, we've got improv theater, we have great, we have someone that does yoga. We of course have visual artists, we have musicians, we have great bands, we have incredible spoken word and rap poets. Um, we have people really that can do a little bit of everything. Age group? We do everything from K to 12 and beyond, but most of our work happens in schools and a little bit with a focus on younger schools. All right, how did you get to this group? Ooh, I was blessed. It's a long story. <laughs> no, you have, oh, I came here 30 years ago with the goal of teaching. From Brazil. Arts. From yes. Brazil, yes. With the intention of creating this in the schools and doing my work. But I had no, no English and no training on how to integrate arts in the curriculum. And if it wasn't for David Marshall, from, at the time it was a uh, Connecticut Commission on the Arts, and um, Le uh, Margaret Levine, yeah. which she was the director yeah, yeah. of uh, Young Audiences at that time, I would not be able to be the artist that I am. I travel all over the place. I was invited by them, and they trained me on how to integrate arts in the curriculum. And if I am doing very well today, it's only thanks to Arts for Learning Connecticut. You're so nice to, to give thanks. How is it that you love working with children and the arts? What, what jazzes you about that? Well, for, first of all, I, I love them, and I think kids are, are incredible, and they smell from far away people they know they know who like them who don't and I get a very good uh, report with them and because of my art form incorporates music dance gymnastics and martial arts and in order to learn you really have to be disciplined they listen to my leading and it is great when I look at those little guys who come all over the place and don't listen to anybody I say stop and they stop. It's not just because I'm cute, it's because of the art form. <laughs> so you have a way with kids. Now, and, they, they, and they listen to me. I tell my mother, my mother had 13 kids, I tell her that one of the things that I hate the most about her when I was a kid, it was that she punished us and then she would call us and say, I did this because I love you. <laughs> and today, I, I don't do that, what she did, but I, I'm very strict, very serious. I said, come here, now I'm going to tell you why I did this. And I use the same technique <laughs> and it worked you. very you well. See? Now, you're always incorporating new acts, right? Yes. In this. Yes. Who are you looking for? That's and you're a brand new executive director, yeah, yeah, too, yeah, so yeah. you're just getting your feet wet. Yeah, here. yeah, yeah. Who are you looking for that you don't have to, to put into the schools? We were just talking about this the other day, so... I knew um, that. I heard you. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we are really interested in uh, someone that's an anime artist. Because a lot of young people in the state were hearing, uh, we were at a PTO conference the other day, and someone said, my kid is obsessed with anime, they're in this anime club. Anime as an animation? As in Japanese oh. anim anime. Japanese I don't animation. Know what this is. Yeah. I, you know, it's, it's a art form that, young, that a chunk of young people are excited in, excited about, and we said we don't have that on our, on our roster. So we're looking for an anime artist. We're looking for a potter, actually, someone that can do pottery, because we don't have a potter on our artist right now. Let me just write that down. So if you're a potter, we'll pull you into school. Okay, potter, an anime. An anime, A-N-I-M-E. Okay, and what else? Oh, my God. What do you think? When you think about our roster, are there any holes that we need to fill? We have so many. We really do have a lot. Yeah, we really do have a lot. We have magicians, we have all kinds of things. I don't know what's missing. You work well together. Now, you're not just sitting there with a stick. What is that? This is the main instrument of my art form. It is um, the instrument that leads the music for the, the martial artist to perform. Martial artists? Yeah. Okay, so when they would start, they would hear this. This is, uh, it was created as a martial arts in the 16th century by the Africans as a way for them to escape from slavery. And because they were not allowed to practice martial arts, they introduced the music and disguised the fight in some kind as of native dance. dance. And until today, 
people, that's how smart they were 400 yeah. years ago. Uh, until today, many martial artists think that capoeira, it is just a dance until they get kicked by a very powerful ah. kick. It's a very powerful martial art disguised as a dance. Yeah. And what this is this is made out of? This is a, a piece of wood that comes from a very special, special tree from Brazil called Beriba. The wire comes from inside of an old car tire. We have a rock that changes the pitch on an instrument. The gourd is where the sound comes through. And I have a, a basket with seeds and a little stick that I strum against the wire. To change the, and each rhythm means one type of game. Mm. And we have samba too. So it's not a song you're playing, but it's... It that is a song too. It is a song. Everything is connected to the player. Let's say that you're playing capoeira with him, and somehow he hits you in the leg, and then you, ah, you cry, I wince. And, then, and then you make like a face, and then whoever is leading the music will make fun of you. Oh, the well, little girl is... Well, that goes without saying, yeah. right? <laughs> So as a martial artist, so it's a very relaxed art mm. form. It is the only martial art I think you'd see two real tough guys fighting each other, and at the end they hugging and give a kiss. Because it's a dance. <laughs> because right? it is just part of it. Have you ever done any modern songs on that that have nothing <laughs> well, to do there with is, martial arts? There, there is a lot, a lot of um, jazz uh, bands that use bidding bow wow. as part of their music. Can you play a little jazz? Uh, well, it's, just, it's very specific for uh, capoeira. Okay. Now, when they are playing the rhythm, then if you are a good musician, you can follow with it. But there is no such a thing as um, playing a, a pop music or with a beating ball. I can sing it any song with that if it was the case, but no, it is mixed when they play. I see. Uh, yeah. All right. You ever pick that up and try to play that? I never have. No, because you know your strengths <laughs> and he knows yes. your strengths. Yeah, yeah, I like right, it. Right, you also brought a tambourine with you. Oh, the tambourine, right. it's, it's my favorite of all instruments. I, well, this is the, the instrument that represents the national music and dance of Brazil, which we also bring to the schools and teach the kids on how to do it. It's called samba. And we have a school very down the road here. We just opened like three months ago. And this is the sound of the, of the samba. There are many things we Show can off. do. Show <laughs> off. <laughs> we can do some tricks with this in the carnival. That's the main rhythm, music, and dance. For the four days and four nights of the festivities, the biggest in the world, I believe, is called the carnival. And it starts in February, end of February. Do you ever go back home for I any go of this stuff? I go as often as I can. That's where I recharge yes. my batteries. Yeah. All right, so you have demonstrated what the kids see yes. in school. Yes. And, and they get to talk to you and they get to learn. What else, when you, when you put an artist in yeah. the school, can yeah. kids and teachers and administrators expect? So, you know, we think about our programming falling into a few different categories. Um, the first category is where we'll bring in an artist that will do an incredible exposure piece that a student will see, having never, never seen something like that before, get inspired and maybe go home and one day say, oh man, I remember when I saw that awesome thing. Um, that's sort of a low touch. Then we have uh, a medium touch where we'll put an artist in and say, hey, let's say there's a history class that's talking about Brazil, getting a Brazilian artist in there will have a real connection to the curriculum. So, oh, I'm learning about this in the classroom. Now I saw this artist do something. It helps me think deeper about the content. We also then have this highest level of engagement, which is teaching artist integration, where a teaching artist will say, okay, hey, middle school English teacher, your teaching goals are X, Y, and Z for the next six months. We're gonna design a weekly program that I'm gonna come back and see these students every week for the rest of the year and help them get to these outcomes. So at Arts for Learning, we have an education manager that is a former art teacher that knows the curriculum and the state standards. So we can say, here's how this artist will plug exactly into what you need to be doing as a teacher. And if there's an opportunity for that sort of teaming up, we can really go deep on actual curricular stuff. Now, you had a band at one time, do you still? I did. Yeah, I still do, actually. You still do? Yeah, yeah we still play. So you can kind of relate. You, uh -huh. you should incorporate uh -huh. him in, into your band. What kind of, <laughs> what kind of, music, what kind of music did you play uh, we, through we, college? Yeah, yeah. So we're a band called Great Caesar. We're a rock band. 
Yeah, so I sing, we've got a gala that sings with us, trumpet player, so we're sort of like a big, rowdy kind of rock band. And have you played in the schools yet? <sighs> you know, I, I not with Arts for Learning, but we did a lot over the last, Let's I mean, this time again. Well, See, so our, roster is, our roster is yeah. full of all the people that can really do it. Because, you know, we really think that our, the folks on our roster are teaching artists. These are people that, that um, have trained, whether it's with our organization yeah. or otherwise, to think about how does their art form an entryway into education. So, you know, we're not the person that's going to come in and teach a kid how to play the saxophone. Right. We're the person that's going to have a saxophone player come in and help use that as a tool to think differently about whatever they're learning in their classroom. So our teaching artists are, are they're, they're spe we couldn't do it is what I'm saying. <laughs> how did you end up in this job? So I, um, you know, I, when I graduated, I started working as a fourth grade teacher. So I taught for a little bit. And then I helped start an organization called The Future Project. That's a national nonprofit that does high school education work. I was living in New York City. And then when I moved back to my hometown, Madison, Connecticut, about a year ago, I found out that Arch Learning was looking for a new leader. We've, the organization's been around for about four decades. So we have a long history. Started out as young audiences. Started as young audiences, yeah, yeah. which is a, a national organization. Actually, we're an affiliate of that organization. And then when um, our wonderful previous director was stepping aside after a great career, I said, here's a great opportunity for me to bring the things I care about, education, the arts, and then social activism work into one place. When you go out to the schools, um, is it just yourself or do you bring a whole entourage of people? No, I, I, I used to have seven people and then four people and then five people <laughs> and I end up now with three doing a great job. So our job is to demonstrate samba, all Brazilian stuff. Samba, do capoeira, the kids samba? Oh my God, they do everything. No matter how big the audience is, uh -huh. they all participate with us. And so now I have a, a Thelma Ladeira, is a very famous um, Brazilian dancer. She actually danced um, for many years for a Brazilian TV show mm. and traveled all over the world. And one of my students who started as a 15-year-old teenager who was incredible, very great artist, now he's a musician, he's, a, he's everything. So the three of us bring this work. This and see, they learned <clears throat> about cultures and diversity yeah. at a young age yeah. and you never know when that's going to come exactly. come yeah. into your life as an adult mm -hmm. yeah. you know um, we often fall into the cultural arts programming at schools or even at libraries or community centers so whenever someone's thinking hey how can i get a different culture a different group of people to show up whether it's in madison or here in new haven or up in hartford or in the corner of the state um, we have an artist that can that can help and fit into that it makes the world a lot smaller it's right? beautiful um, what have you learned by being in this organization? Well, first of all, that they care for people in general. And there is no better way for a child to learn any subject in life besides arts. Arts is the main thing. And through Arts um, for Learning Connecticut, I also work in New Jersey and in New York. And it's the biggest of all difference that we can make. Mm. So I think that through all this, the difference that we made for the children is what counts. And I also think it is great because not everybody's into sports, yeah. oh, right? Yeah. And without the arts, life would not be as rich. Yeah. Oh, no. It just wouldn't. No. So I want to thank you both, John Michael Parker and Efrain. Efrain. Efrain <laughs> Silva. Thank you so much for, thank you. for telling me what you do. And yes. uh, I wish I was a kid again so I could yeah, learn absolutely. all this. Thanks again. Thanks for having us. Thank you. You bet. It was a pleasure. Spend all night kissing and a bump is right here, then who else is missing? Got a little sidetracked to find my solution. I find a piece of the door, but it's also a metaphor. Need to keep on to the grocery store of the mind. Just the same time, skip right ahead to the nice ride.